It's obvious which diet is best, and you'll be able to work it out from this list of the current most popular diets. We've got the carnivore diet, vegan, mediterranean, vegetarian, low carb, keto, and paleo. So what's the best diet? It's the diet that you can stick to. And in this video, I want to explain the fundamentals of a healthy diet so that whichever one you choose, you can maximize your longevity. As we go, I'll troubleshoot the common issues in the diets that I previously mentioned, and at the end of the video, I'll share the diet that I personally use. Let's start with protein, and most of us aren't getting enough. In a 2020 British Medical Journal paper, it showed that higher intakes of protein were associated with lower risks of all-cause death rates. Protein is crucial for our muscle strength, so in our early years we want to maximize our peak in muscle strength, then maintain that peak in our middle years, and minimize our losses as we get older. The International Society of Sports Nutrition suggests a protein intake between 1.4 to 2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. And ideally, this protein should be spaced throughout the day, so we're having hits of protein. And further research has come out to suggest that actually the optimal intake of protein is 1.6 grams of protein intake per kilogram of body weight per day. At that 1.6 gram intake, it maximizes our response to resistance training. To put that into context, an 80 kilogram person needs 128 grams of protein intake per day. One egg has got about 6 grams, and 100 grams of beef has got 25 grams of protein. So that 80 kilogram person would need to eat 21 eggs to reach that target, or they would need to eat about half a kilogram of beef. Now I'm not at all suggesting that you should do that, I'm just using those examples to show that it's quite difficult to reach the optimal protein intakes. Particularly if you're on a vegan or vegetarian diet. So for those diets, people just need to be aware that they need to prioritize protein in their foods. Because a well-designed vegan or vegetarian diet can reach those targets, but if it is proving to be an issue, you can turn to things like protein powders. So we do have options such as pea protein powder or soy protein powder. And despite all the noise on social media about soy protein, there's no evidence whatsoever that soy protein has any effect on testosterone levels or estrogen levels. Personally, I use a protein powder to help reach my protein targets. That completes the brief overview on protein. Now let's have a look at dietary fats, and to do this section properly, I need to explain cholesterol. But before I do, thank you to the now 250 patrons who are supporting the channel. All patrons get early access to my videos and the 5 years younger on online program. To join our growing community, there's a link in the pinned comment, and proceeds go towards funding the rapamycin clinical study. Cholesterol is essential for life, and we cannot live without it. It helps to make our cell membranes. It gets changed into hormones such as testosterone. It's crucial for bile production, so that we can digest fats, and the list goes on. So no cholesterol equals no life. But we've known for decades that every cell in our body can produce its own cholesterol. And organs such as the liver can produce extra cholesterol, in case other parts in the body need a temporary top-up. This means we need a transportation system to move that extra cholesterol from the liver around the body. And primarily, that extra cholesterol is transported via our blood, but this raises a problem. Blood is primarily water and cholesterol doesn't mix with water. Think about trying to mix water and oil. They separate out and it doesn't work. So the body needs to package up that cholesterol into a vehicle that it can then transport in the blood. And that vehicle is a spherical ball called a lipoprotein, where the outer layer it does mix well with water. Water, so now we can transport the cholesterol around the body. But it's during this transport that some of the cholesterol can get dumped into the blood vessel walls, leading to blockages. So which cholesterol vehicles or lipoproteins do we need to worry about? Well, as a broad simplification, lipoproteins have got either an ApoA tag or an ApoB tag, and it's the ApoB family that cause the issues. This includes LDL, or low-density lipoprotein, that's commonly measured in lipid blood tests. But it's crucial to remember that it's the entire ApoB family of lipoproteins that can cause issues because those lipoproteins are very small. So you may see online some people saying that it's only the small dense LDL that we need to concern ourselves with. That is incorrect. It's the entire ApoB family that we need to worry about. Because we've got very good data that when we lower ApoB, including LDL cholesterol, we lower the chance of heart disease. So coming back to the diet, we've got very good evidence that if we lower saturated fat intake, we lower LDL cholesterol and we lower the chance of heart disease. This is a common problem for the carnivore, keto and low carbohydrate diets, because those diets often contain animal products and butter, which have a lot of saturated fat and therefore boost our LDL cholesterol. And you'll see a lot of noise and misrepresenting the studies to suggest 
is that LDL cholesterol doesn't actually matter. For example, one study that's commonly referenced in the carnivore and ketogenic diet communities is this one, showing that very low levels of LDL cholesterol is associated with higher death rates. But we have to remember that that research is based on observational data, as in looking in the rearview mirror. And that contradictory finding can be explained by reverse causation, where debilitation and illness, they do cause decreases in cholesterol levels. Instead, what actually matters is what happens when we actively make a change in someone's cholesterol levels. And we can see that when we actively decrease someone's cholesterol levels, we lower their chance of heart disease. It's your health, your decision, but in clinical medicine, the evidence is overwhelming that if we lower saturated fats, we lower cholesterol levels and therefore lower heart disease rates. But what if you feel great on a carnivore diet? And Dr. Jordan Peterson is probably the most famous example of this. He's found a diet that works for him, and that is brilliant. But now what we want to do is minimize the downsides. And we do this not by doing mental gymnastics to justify a higher LDL cholesterol. We do it by prioritizing lean cuts of meat, trying to avoid butter. And if that's not enough, then we consider medical options. So we've got statins, PCSK9 inhibitors, and azetamibe. On the point of statins, I do want to clarify a few things about their side effects, because the side effects are often overblown on social media. When it comes to muscle aches, there's a very, very small increase in muscle aches because of statins. Statins are not associated with cognitive impairment, and actually they may be protective against Alzheimer's disease. And we've also got very good evidence that statins do not cause issues with testosterone levels. So there are ways to minimize the downsides of a keto, low-carb, or carnivore diet, but generally speaking, we want to try and prioritize unsaturated fats and minimize saturated fat. The final point I want to mention is that saturated fat is not the same as dietary cholesterol. Dietary cholesterol for most people doesn't really have much influence on their heart disease risk, but saturated fats do. To sum things up so far, we want to aim for about 1.6 grams of protein intake per kilogram of body weight per day. That helps to maximize our responses to resistance exercise. We want to prioritize unsaturated fat and minimize saturated fat. And if your LDL cholesterol or ApoB is high, don't ignore it. The next section is carbohydrates. Now there's no question that we want to reduce sugary foods and processed foods. What is controversial online, but really shouldn't be, is the dietary guidelines suggesting that we should be eating more fruits, vegetables, and whole grains. So let's go through the evidence. We've got a Cochrane review, which is at the very top of the evidence pyramid, showing that higher dietary fiber intakes lower cholesterol levels. We've also got a 2022 meta-analysis showing that higher dietary intakes of fiber are associated with lower death rates. And we've got a separate meta-analysis from the American Heart Association showing that total fruits and vegetables fruits by themselves or vegetables by themselves are associated with decreased cardiovascular disease. There used to be a war against carbohydrates, but thankfully this is ending because the war should have been against sugar and processed foods. Personally, the diet that I follow resembles the Mediterranean diet with a few tweaks. So the classic Mediterranean diet has got a lot of whole grains, vegetables, legumes, fruits, nuts, seeds, and fish. So my breakfast is typically eggs on whole grain toast with salmon and avocado. Lunch at the clinic is typically oats mixed in with blueberries and protein powder. And dinner is a variety, but at least half of my plate is filled with mixed vegetables and salads. And depending on my protein intakes for the day, I might have another protein shake. Overall, I can't emphasize enough how crucial it is to find a diet that works for you. But ideally, every diet should have these unifying fundamentals. We want to try and reach that 1.6 gram of protein intake per kilogram of body weight per day. We want to try and prioritize unsaturated fats and minimize saturated fats. We want to have whole foods and minimize our sugar and processed food intake. The next thing that needs to be addressed is salt intake, and I've done a separate video about that here. A massive thank you to donotage.org for their $10,000 donation to my rapamycin study. They are a health research organization, and to benefit from their ingredients as well as the 10% discount code, Check out the pinned comment.